So as I was making my notes for this video, a thought occurred to me, and the thought was that season six is actually really similar to season two. Let me explain. So the beginning of season two is really strong. Like I wanted to watch every episode of season two, like from episode one to episode 10. Like I was into it. Actually, I'll even give it to episode 16. I think season two, the first 16 episodes are really, really strong. But then after 16, I really was not a fan of season two at all. In fact, I thought like the finale of two is one of the weakest finales the show has ever had. But then, and, and hear me out, I really feel that the end of two parallels the beginning of six with at least the feels because the beginning of six had such potential and the end of two honestly had such potential, but like, you know, they had like the office, which was again, like they were, you know, trying to make it Peter Pan, but they just did it in such a bad way that you're like, oh my God, why is this happening? And then um, with Greg and Tamara, they were, you were like, no, like this, this is not a thing. But again, like the beginning of six, you know, it was a struggle to get through. I really feel that if you're binging the show and you get to six, you're going to be like, okay, season six, what's happening here? But then as you get, you know, past episode nine, I think episode 10 is where it really starts to shine. You go, wow, six is really good because you feel the impact of the evil queen and the black fairy and whatnot because at the end of episode uh, 10, you meet Gideon. So honestly, I really feel that two and six are very similar, you know, even in terms of just the way the stories are constructed. It's very interesting, but I like six more than I like two because I feel that the the character development in six is even more prevalent than the character development in two. And that's saying something because in two, you still have Regina being the evil queen or evil s queen. It's, you know, it's an odd concept. But I also will tell you guys, I am working on a season one top um, five video. I will do that at the end of the summer. And after, um, you know, this is done, I will do a season seven top five episodes, which I got to say is actually really simple to do as well. I already know exactly what five episodes I will be doing for season seven. I'll get that out in about a week or two, hopefully. So let's talk season six. There's a there's a couple episodes I think really stuck out. And so the way that I constructed the video is I hate actually doing like, you know, like number one, number two, number three. So I picked the five episodes that stuck out to me the most. And, you know, we're just going to discuss them in the order that they air. I also have a couple of honorable mentions I want to discuss. And I want to briefly, briefly discuss, um, you know, my thoughts on the beginning as to why I think it was really slow. So, you know, like a bitter draw episode two was a really strong episode, but it just, it didn't seem to fit because, you know, you had this whole idea of untold stories and then for some reason, episode three dealt with Cinderella, but then, you know, you have, um, you know, with the, a bitter draught, you're like, oh, that's an untold story. Like, that's really cool. Uh, the, you know, the Count of Monte Cristo is a really interesting, un, like, relatively unknown character. Like, I had never heard of him until I had watched the show. And, you know, probably, I know other people have, obviously, you know, but it's like, you know, to the um, general audience, it's relatively unknown. So I thought that was really cool. But then you kill off Hyde in a strange case. And Hyde was, you know, I loved how, like, Hyde was actually the good guy while uh, Dr. Jekyll was the bad guy. Like, it was hilarious because, you know, I remember when I reviewed the episode, you know, Jekyll pushed, um, I think it was Mary, out the window. And you're like, it wasn't an accident, dude. You pushed her. So, you know, you, you have all this potential with the untold stories, but then you kill off Hyde, and then you you only really do one untold story. You're trying to include Aladdin into it. It was just, it was too much at once, and it really just should have been untold stories with Hyde and the Evil Queen as the bad guy, and there should have been no Cinderella, and Cinderella just should have really stuck to season seven, or not in season seven at all. So I just really feel that, you know, as you get into the beginning of six, you're just like, ah! Like, this is very choppy. And then, you know, episode five, which is what the a great transition to my auto mentions, starts with the Aladdin backstory. And I think Street Rats is a fantastic episode because I just love the twist on the Aladdin backstory. Um, Denzi Aldenzi and Karen David are fantastic as both Aladdin and Jasmine. I really think that Disney should have at least considered them for, um, you know, the live action Aladdin film. But it would have been, I guess, too close to home to have them play the same character twice. I actually don't know any character from Once Upon a Time that has worked in a uh, Disney fairy tale film, as far as I know, at least in the same role. But I, I really, obviously, you know, Sebastian Stan, you move from Once Upon a Time to Marvel, but, you know, he's not playing the Mad Hatter and Alice in Wonderland. That was Donnie Depp. But, um, you know, I really just liked Street Rats a lot. That was a really strong episode. I really liked the backstory of Aladdin. And then 
the other honorable mention I have is Murder Most Foul because it was that bromance epi episode between Captain Hook and David. You know, Colin o O'Donoghue is a really strong actor. I think that Josh Dallas, you know, he left the show after six, but, you know, he, he kind of felt that he got a little bored with David. And I think in this episode, he really got into it because, you know, he's dealing with the consequences of his father and how Hook was the murderer of his father. I thought that was a really strong episode, like the end of it when they're, you know, like uh, they're holding each other's shoulder. I thought that was a, a really touching moment. Like it's a really strong episode. So Street Rats and Murder Most Foul are really good episodes as well. Now, as I said, the way I'm constructing this is we're going to just go in the order that they aired. So these are five best episodes of Once Upon a Time Season 6. And number five is going to be episode 10, Wish You Were Here. Now, I really like this episode because it parallels so much of season one, and it's also the what-if world, you know, the wish realm. It's the introduction of the wish realm, which, by the way, really should have vanished after this episode. I really think it had no purpose, but then, you know, they decide to keep it in season six, you're like, uh, seven, excuse me, and you're like, what the hell? Like, no, 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 there cannot be all these worlds. You know, we've read articles, we've had this discussion about how the wish realm was a thing, have no more opinions beyond that. I just, I really hated the concept of the Wish Realm, you know, because Wish Realm Henry was a thing. In the end, you end up with two Henrys in season seven. But Wish You Were Here, it's a fantastic, fantastic episode. It's a great mid-season finale. You know, you have Emma acting like she doesn't know what's going on. You have Regina, you know, unwillingly wanting to act as the evil queen, killing the Wish Realm version of um, Snow and Charming. It's it's fantastic. Like the the introduction where Regina redoes the I'm sorry I'm late at Henry's um, knighting. It wouldn't be a coronation because he's not being crowned. He's being knighted. When he's being knighted was hilarious. And she's like, look for that hero, princess. And I and I'm like, I love this. I love it. Like Lana Perea was beautiful in that in that episode. Um, you know, it also involved the evil queen as well. The the serum queen. I've talked about her in quite some time. It was a fun, fun episode. In the end of it, you have uh, Robin appear, and then you have Gideon be introduced into the town. And it's like, okay, cool. Like, stuff's about to go down. And obviously, because number one, or I guess number five on this list, is Wish You Were Here, none of the first five epi uh, ten, nine episodes, excuse me, made it to this list because I really just feel they were random and didn't help the plot. But I think that Wish You Were Here really started to get things going. I really, I really liked it a lot. So number four, I'm sorry, but I had to do this. It's a two-way tie between page 23 and A Wondrous Place because they're so connected that it really doesn't make a lot of sense to divide them. Um, you know, because the show is very episodic where you don't need to watch every episode in a row in order to understand it, but these two episodes, like, they just wrap each other's stories up so, so fast. And, you know, page 23, it's, it's Regina versus Regina, and then Emma is engaged, and it's, you know, like the scene where Reg the... Zelina, excuse me, where Zelina, you know, grabs uh, Emma's hand. She's like, is that a wedding ring? And then Emma and Regina hug. It's like, it's a beautiful, it's like a beautiful interaction. And then, you know, you have the evil queen become evil queen good-ish. It's interesting. And then she gets her happy ending with Wish Realm Robin. It's, it's a really fun episode. And then, you know, A Wondrous Place, it wraps up the Aladdin and Jasmine storyline. It, um, it, you, um, excuse me, you get to see Ariel and Jasmine together. It's it's really fun. Hook is prevalent. Like, he's prevalent in um, that episode. He's slightly prevalent in page 23 because at the end of page 23, Hook is um, leaving on Captain Nemo's sub, and everyone's thinking, oh, no, there's going to be this long, drawn-out conflict. But the writers of the show were smart, thankfully, and they wrap up that conflict in the next episode. That's why I really feel these two episodes need to be together because Emma thought that Hook was going to leave her and not come back, and you're like, no, like, that can't happen, and, like, you're relieved that in, you know, A Wondrous Place, it's, um, it's wrapped up so quick, so it's a fun episode, also, in A Wondrous Place, you have that great bar scene with Snow White, Regina, and Emma, and you think all the way back to season one, like, these characters would never hang on a bar, that, like, makes no sense, so, uh, page 23 in A Wondrous Place, fantastic episodes, fantastic, all right, now, number three, I think it's pretty obvious, because I'm almost positive that you guys can guess, um, what my number two and one episodes are. Number three is the Zelina episode where bluebirds fly. You know, Zelina's dealing with the woodsman who then becomes, you know, the, the tin man. And, you know, she has the that magic heart that can absorb her magic. And then she's dealing with the black fairy and she makes the 
the fairy crystals, dark crystals, and then at the end of the episode, Zelina has to give up her magic. It's just a beautiful episode. Rebecca Meter, who was really shoved off for season six, which is sad. Like the scenes she was in throughout most of six, they were kind of okay. There was they were funny. There's like some fun scenes that she had, but like this episode was like her episode, and then she really got to she got to do stuff in at least the final battle in the song in your heart. You know, it's it's so sad because you know in the season three um season three b where she is the main antagonist you know she's a main character because she's a main antagonist but she does so much and then you know they're like we love her but we don't know what to do with her and that was really how you feel with her with um seasons four five and six and slightly seven and seven i think she did enough i, I actually really liked her in seven i mean i like her all the time but i think that the character of zelina was more important in seven than she was in six but the where bluebirds fly, you know, at the end, she gives up her magic, and her magic was her identity. So it's just fantastic to see Zelina do that. It's a beautiful, beautiful episode. Like where you have Emma rub Zelina's arm, and like, yes, we will take care of your baby. It's, it, it's beautiful. I, it makes you miss Jennifer Morrison. Like the more I I was watching this, these episodes, I'm like, oh, this makes season seven such a waste because like you miss Jennifer Morrison, you miss these interactions between these three ladies. It's awesome. All right, number two, The Song in Your Heart. It's a musical episode. One of the best episodes of the show. I love the music. My favorite song is um, A Happy Beginning. I almost called it The Wedding Song, but that, that would that would work. I love A Happy Beginning. It's a fantastic song. Also, Zelina's song, Wicked Always Wins. Amazing, amazing song. Captain Hook's song, um, I'm blanking on the name of it at the moment. It will probably come back to me. Uh, but I love that song as well. I mean, uh, Emma's, song, um, Emma's theme song, also amazing as well. Like the songs in this episode were so good, they made sense to the plot. It was unfortunate that you know their memories of them were kind of erased uh, of the songs, you know. But then they came back, so it, it was interesting that the way the the, um, the episode was constructed with the flashbacks because the characters, you know, were meant to forget the songs, and then at the end of the episode, those memories were returned. I really did like that. At least they have the memories um, come back. But I just love the episode, like the be in the beginning of the episode where you have uh, Snow and Charming, they're singing and like it's 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 very classical Disney. And then you have, you know, the Black Fairy interrupt Zelina uh, or Regina, oh my god, Emma's like a bridal shower type thing. And Revenge is going to be mine, by, by the way. I got Hook song. I knew I would get it. I knew I would get it. But then you have, you know, the Black Fairy come in and she goes, I wasn't a fan of White Weddings. Hey, I can quote the show. Like, I'm good with stuff like this. Um, and you have the Black Fairy come in and then, you know, you have everyone be, go, go, oh, crap. And you, you're, you're migrating to the Enchanted Forest. We have the Evil Queen, you know, versus the Charmings. Um, my least favorite song is still the Charmings versus the Evil Queen. But, and I got to say, even then Regina's song uh, wasn't that good to me as well. I think Lana Priya was a great singer, but I just didn't like the song in terms of what I wanted to hear. But I just love the way it was done. And then to have that final performance where they're singing a happy beginning, it's amazing. So, The Song in Your Heart. It's a fantastic episode. And if I had to actually put, like, numbers, I would probably put The Song in Your Heart as number one. Well, I would make the number one the number two, but then, you know, because I'm not doing it, you know, numerically like this. Number one is The Final Battle. Now, The Final Battle is, it's very final because it's like you're, quote unquote final appearances of so many characters as in main roles so many stories are wrapped up um and it's just it's a fun fun two-part episode it feels like a movie and it, it really makes season six worth the trouble you know the black fairy she was introduced in changelings which i believe is episode nine but she, she had been talked about before but you never really felt her impact until you know you know she came back after um I believe it was around like episode 15 or so because she came in in episode nine but she wasn't in storybook but like you knew you knew that she was around and then you, you know you like the concept of the black fairy but to see everything that she can do you know there was the episode the black fairy which by the way is a really good episode as well but um it, it didn't make the cut for the top five but i guess i'll throw it into the honorable mentions i'm sorry it's coming in late but the black fairy episode also honorable mention the point being is you really get to see the Black Fairy go at it. She she does her own version of the Dark Curse. It's it's interesting because you have Emma not wanting to believe it, so it's very uh, classic season one Emma. And then you have her belief eradicating the realms ar around you in the Enchanted Forest. And you're like, wow, if she doesn't wake up, some like they're going to die. It's Everything's going to vanish. And you're like, this is absolutely fantastic. Like, I love this episode. And the, the stakes are high. And then you have... You know, Rumpelstiltskin kill his mom. Like, Rumpelstiltskin, a character who so many people either love or hate. I had a very tumultuous relationship with the character. 
I love the actor, hated the character. Um, and then he kills a black fairy. And you're like, yes, he's a, he's a good guy. And I gotta say, in season seven, he's a really good guy too. Like I, I liked how um, Rumple or how Robert Carlyle did Weaver. I thought it was really, I thought it was well, well written. The many flaws of seven, Rumple was not one of them. But then you know you you have Rumple kill his mother. You have the actual battle between Emma and Gideon occur. And then you have that final ending scene where everyone's laughing and ha being happy. And you're just like, it's it's so beautiful. It's so touching. And then, you know, seven happens. You know, you have the ending scene with Lucy and Henry. You're like, what's happening here? But I really think that the final battle is a fantastic, fantastic episode. So anyway, those are my top five episodes of Once Upon a Time, season six. The final battle, the song in your heart, where bluebirds fly, a two-way tie between page 23 and A Wondrous Place and Wish You Were Here, with honorable mentions going to Street Rats, Murder Most Vile, and The Black Fairy. Anyway, I want to know what your top five episodes are in the comments below. Thank you for watching my um, list of the season six episodes. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say, and we'll talk real soon. More videos to come. Like I said, I will get a season seven uh, top five videos out soon. I am going to do a couple reactions at some point. There's... there's this stuff coming, Incredibles 2 review, I haven't seen it yet, uh, which is unfortunate, but Incredibles 2 review is coming as well. So anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll talk soon. Alright guys, bye.